Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at the introduction to complex exponentials. The general structure of a complex exponential is given by x of t is equal to c times e power a times t, where t is the time. c and a are complex numbers. So they basically belong to the set of complex numbers. Complex set. Now let us look at the special cases where the value of a is either purely real or purely imaginary or and finally the general case of where a is complex. So let us look at the case one. Assume that c is a positive real number that is c belongs to the set of positive real numbers and a belongs to the set of real numbers. Then the signal x of t is equal to c times e power a t. For simplicity, let us assume that c is equal to 1. Therefore, x of t is basically a real exponential. It's a real exponential. Now, the structure of x of t depends on the sign of a. If a is positive, then x of t is basically a growing exponential. And examples of this growing exponential process are, the first one is the output of a chain reaction, that is the, nucle the radioactive nucleates coming out of a chain reaction. They basically grow exponentially. And the next example is the multiplication of bacteria cells. That is initially if there is only one or, one or two bacteria, they basically multiply within a few minutes and within 10 hours they can grow to as large as 1 billion cells. This is a very good example of an exponential growth process. And in the case where A is less than 0, then X of T is a decaying exponential or a negative exponential. Exponential. Examples of negative exponentials or decaying exponentials are, for the first one is the radioactive decay process, that is the amount of or the mass of the radioactive nucleate, that is the mother nucleate, after a certain time t, that is after every half time, the mass basically becomes half of the original or the previous mass. And as time increases, the mass reduces exponentially. And another example where we see negative or decaying exponential is the response of a RC circuit. That is the voltage basically reduces to a very small value as time increases. Now let us look at the plots corresponding to growing and decaying exponentials. When A is positive, that is A is greater than 0, we have a growing exponential. That is the value of the function or the value of the signal basically goes to infinity as time goes to infinity. And when the coefficient A is less than 0, that is say minus 2, then then the signal is a decaying exponential. That is, the value of the signal reaches 0 as time goes to infinity. Or, or in practical terms, the value of the function becomes very small very quickly. Thus, for the real exponential, the growing exponential basically become uh, very large very quickly and decaying exponentials become very small very quickly. Now, let us look at the case where the value of A is purely imaginary. That is, A is purely imaginary. In this case, x of t is equal to e power j omega t, assuming a is equal to j into omega. And we also assume that c is equal to 1 for simplicity. So, in this case, x of t is basically a complex sinusoid. x of t is basically a, is a periodic signal. In other words, x of t is equal to cos of omega t plus j into sine of omega t. So, it is a combination of sinusoid. Note that even though a is purely imaginary, x of t is a complex number or is a complex signal. From the definition, we can clearly see that e power j omega t is equal to e power j omega t of t plus a period t, which is again equal to e power j omega t into the original signal e power j omega t. That means, the period of the signal is t and the value e power j omega t should be equal to 1 
where omega into t is equal to m times 2 pi. And here, omega, and here the fundamental period t naught which is equal to 2 pi by omega or in other words omega is equal to 2 pi by the period the fundamental period t naught and the relation between the t that is the period and the fundamental period is m into t naught and they are both equal when m, m is equal to 1. Thus, the fundamental frequency omega is equal to 2 pi by t naught. This is measured in radians. Sometimes omega is also written as 2 pi f naught, where f naught is the fundamental frequency in cycles per second. This is the fundamental frequency. And t naught is the fundamental period. A popular signal that will be studied in signals and systems has a structure A cos of omega t plus phi. This, this signal structure is directly related to e power j omega t as follows A into cos of omega t plus phi is equal to A times real component of e power j omega t plus phi. So, the, the cosine signal is basically the real component of the e power j omega t that is the complex exponent and this relation is basically derived from the Euler's formula. Another concept that is directly related to this in this case the signal phi k of t is equal to e power j k into omega naught t where k is an integer k omega naught is basically a multiple of fundamental frequency omega naught. A real world example in which we have pure sinusoids are the response of an LC circuit which is given by I of t that is the current is equal to I naught multiplied by cosine of omega t plus phi which is very similar to this signal structure. As I said, so the circuit response of a, the response of a circuit, LC circuit is given by a pure sinusoid. Similarly, the response of a mechanical oscillator that is basically a weight suspended by a spring is also a sinusoid. That is the length of the, the position of the weight when the spring is completely extended corresponds to the peak values and the position of the weight that is the distance from the origin when it is fully compressed that is when the spring is completely converged corresponds to the minimum value. Now, we, let us look at the final case where the value of A is fully complex that is it has both real component and an imaginary component and C is also a complex number with the amplitude equal to modulus of C and phase equal to e power phase equal to phi. Therefore, the signal x of t has a structure modulus of c into e power j phi multiplied by e power r r plus j omega into t that is it can be rewritten as modulus of c into e power r into t that is the amplitude component that changes with time and the phase given by e power j into omega t plus phi omega t basically represents the sinusoid component and phi is the initial phase Again, in this case, there are two possibilities. For values of r less than 0, the signal x of t is basically a damping sinusoid. Now, let us look at some real world examples of damping sinusoids. The first one is the popular RLC circuit. The response of a RLC circuit is basically a damping sinusoid. That is the value of the amplitude reduces with time. Another example is when a weight is suspended by a spring but is also damped by a, another weight suspended in water. In this case, the motion of the weight suspended is also a decaying sinusoid. So, for example, when A, let us look at the case where the value of R is negative. Here, the signal is a damped sinusoid. That is, its, that is its amplitude reduces very quickly. The second possibility is when R is greater than 0. Then, X of T is basically a growing sinusoid. In this case, the value of r is a positive number. That then, 
the amplitude of the signal basically grows very quickly. However, it is still a sinusoid. Thus, to summarize, there are three possible cases for a complex exponential. The first case is when the coefficient a is purely real. In this case, the signal is a purely real signal. That is, it is a either a growing exponential or a decaying exponential based on the sign of the coefficient a. And, in, and the second case is when a is purely imaginary. In this case, x of t is a sinusoid signal. That is, when, x of, when a is equal to j omega, x of t is e power j omega t, which is basically cos of omega t plus j sin omega t. So, this is a sinusoid signal. And in the most general case, where a is a fully complex number, uh, that is, it has both a real component and an imaginary component. In this case, it is a, either a damping sinusoid or a growing sinusoid based on the sign of the uh, real component R. Thanks for watching.